This is the Infinite Flow Show. The Infinite Flow Show. The Infinite Flow Show. The Infinite Flow Show. Where hip hop, the gospel, and sports intersect. Girl, you know the deal The room smoked I don't even know it's real Girl, you gotta chill Cause you don't want the most I'm just trying to keep it real Cause I know the cost It's like that yeah. It's like that yeah. It's like that yeah. I'm just trying to keep it real Like that yeah. Just like that yeah. Just like that yeah. Cause this temptation never kill Like that Girl, you fine, girl, you fine, and you know it uh, Got me having second thoughts about what's bringing me joy uh, Feeling unemployed cause I can't serve two masters You worry about now, I'm more concerned with after Where's my pastor? Might need mama too To pray about some things, I'm trying not to do Man, my spirit's willing, but my flesh is too weak Man, these moments I've been dreading like I'm too cheap We too close, girl, you know the deal The room smoked, I don't even know it's real Girl, you gotta chill, cause you don't want the most I'm just tryna keep it real, cause I know the cost It's like that, yeah, just like that, yeah, it's like that I'm just tryna keep it real, like that, yeah, just like that Send this time for church on Sunday. Time to praise the Lord. Get your mind ready for Monday. I'm an east side church boy. From the south side of Atlanta, Clayton County, count of joy. We just sing hallelujah. Why trying to get it? Dollar legal leakers. Play though, you know that's where they go. Popping with the magazines. Knowing well, they don't like to read. Told myself that won't be me. I got mama, my two sisters, and they counting on my dreams. Lord knows. That mama raised me far away from streets Growing up couldn't listen to rap But still I fell into these beats Fast forward later, never thought that I would be entertaining things Such as labels quitting my 9 to 5 And all the praise of king I'm just a church boy Trying to east side, east side, east side, east side. I was a PK, had Kurt Frank on replay Church Sunday through Friday, and fish fries in between days yeah. But there was something that was never cool Mama made me stay at church all night and go to school Yeah, I feel some type of way At the end of the day, I counted all as a blessing Like I'm flipping these numbers back and forth, counted all as a lesson Even when I'm trying to wild out with these women Trying to play remix to addiction and all I keep on hearing Hold up, hold up, hold up And the zip is okay if this hip ain't feeling me I'm moving around and making moves I got a hundred laces, call me a centipede Dirty boys, we stay covered in that blood And we make it, make it noise R.P. S.M.G. them boys I, Hold up, hold up, I think I'm excellent Cause I be like, whoa, see them blessings in Yeah, tell it what it is, like receptionist Had my back against the rock like a wrestling Hold up Hold up, hold up, hold up, I'm just doing what he said, I'm on auto oh, oh, That stuff you be talking, I care less, Christ who I'm trusting
Hold up. Cause Satan be lying like bad rest, Mitch. Yeah. When the homie did a hit, me and AG got the hits. You know that. Say we cocky, you don't know me, you don't see me when I'm face out in the scriptures. You know that. And it's word, it's official. You know that. Say amen to the bishop. No spirit of fear, it means the fitness. So why would I run with a pistol? When it be job, I'm like, oh man. Oh man. Do an 80 and I'm zooming. Zoom Ready to be and drop a zoom in. Let's go, man. It's coming like Joe when they come in the morning. I'm so fast, so it's 20. I just 20 to a 50. 40, 40, do an 80, 20. Go up to 100. That's what you're supposed to do. Like what? Hey, when you thought it was over. Been a long way, way up, boy. We ain't coming down. Going for it, I'm focused. The blessing, the blessing, the blessing, the blessing. These buses keep coming our way. Yeah, yeah, it's coming our way. Oh, it's coming our way. Oh, yeah, when you thought it was over, probably thought it was over. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell them hold up and they wait for it On my grind so I skate for it God said he gon' work it out I ain't looking back, a bitch press for it They be acting like they ain't know it Looking at me like they ain't know it Tweet aside with that treble up And that bass loud like we bout to blow it yeah. uh, I be on my grind and that for sure, for sure I just keep on knocking, boy And he gon' open the door, door Last now when I'm first later Die now so I live later Love God so I love later Then that sweet like now and later so Remember popping bass and wolf chase on my neck and wrist. 20 a gram for excellence, then turn profits to copper fill. Money just disappeared, but look who Dini make it back again. Can and tell her double team my swisher sweet with leaners in. Right through streets like easy, eat my Jesus, PC, all my sins. Hit the east and the police, my homie cages, just the man. Pulled up unexpected, just like Tommy did in Martin's crib. That's not right, but that's just like that black mask kept him innocent. Another day, another play, another blue face for the save that made me ace and space. The VIP, yeah. Dreams come true, cause all I ever wanted was to ball. Yellow Troy, now the whole world sing with me. I, I wanna be a baller, shot caller, 20 inch blades on the Impala. Fast lane, don't crash, man. That fast life is high, no, uh. But it's levels to it, you and I know, fool. Be humble, yeah. Sit down, uh. Be humble, yeah. Lay low, yeah. Be humble, uh. Sit down, wait now. Be humble, uh, sit down, uh, be humble, yeah, lay low, uh, be humble, uh, lay low, yeah, be humble, uh, sit down, be humble, uh. This morning we're in Revelation chapter 3, we're going to look at verses 18 through 22 as we speak about the church at Laodicea, church at Laodicea, um, as we've all known, um, this past week, we've had our presidential election here in the United States, and Donald Trump is the president elect at this point. And there are many people who are upset uh, that he won for numerous reasons. And there are quite a few Christians, especially those who are minorities that are upset with their white brethren, um, white, quote unquote, evangelicals who voted for Trump. Um, there are those who believe that some Christians compromise their Christian ethics by voting for Mr. Trump, who appears to be, um, at least based on what we've seen, uh, racist to a certain point, feminist, uh, misogynistic, crass, um, and et cetera. And so there are many who are surprised that Trump won. And there are many that, uh, who say that, you know, an individual who calls themselves a Christian um, they were in error for voting for Trump. But quite honestly, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that he won, nor am I surprised that Christians voted for him. I'll just mention that I did not vote for either candidate, Trump or Clinton. Um, I I voted uh, a, a write-in candidate because I could not bring myself to vote for, like I said, someone that I believe um, has many, many flaws in, in Trump, but I also couldn't vote for Clinton either because of some of the things that she stands for and especially what the Democratic Party stands for. So um, I didn't vote for either one. So uh, do not uh, blame me. Uh, but, <laughs> um, but I had people tell me that they were going to vote for the lesser of two evils. And with that sentiment, I believe, you know, if you vote for the lesser of two evils, you're still voting for evil. <laughs> You voted for someone versus voting for 
you know, someone that you believe to be a righteous candidate. So again, I'm not surprised, but here's the thing. God's not surprised either who won God, who knows all things. And so when we, when we are dealing with human beings, here's the thing that we need to realize we are dealing with what flawed people, flawed creatures. All of us are fall are fallen. All of us are sinful. And I don't care how good you are. There are things that you do that are unrighteous. The Bible indicates this, that all have sinned and what? Fallen short of the glory of God. And so there is none that is perfect. There's only one, the Bible indicates, who is perfect. And thus we all need to and must fall before the throne of grace so that we might be renewed. And as I think about what's happened you know, within our, our country, within our culture, I think about the church at Laodicea to a certain extent. Because the church at Laodicea needed refinement. They needed renewal. This is the only church out of the seven that Jesus speaks to that he has nothing good to say about them. Not one thing. It's judgment that he says or speaks to them. He talks about their errors, about the things that they're doing, about their sinfulness, about their unrighteousness. He didn't say one good thing like he does some of the other churches. And so Jesus, as we're going to read, he's going to speak to the church at Laodicea and analyze their deeds, their works. And what he's going to tell them is this, that you need refinement and purification because you have completely abandoned the mission which you as a Christian church should have, which is to glorify the kingdom of God. That's what we're all called to do. If you are called by the name of Jesus Christ, you are called to bring glory to him and to his kingdom. And so starting out at verse 18, note what Jesus says to them. Therefore, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich and white robes to clothe you and to keep the shame of your naked nakedness from being seen and solve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. One of the things that I stated last week was this, that the church at Laodicea was what? It was a rich church. They were found within a rich community. They had material wealth. They had fine clothing because they were known as a city that had fine linens. And so the people were well dressed. They were really well clothed. They had riches. It kind of reminds me a little bit to a certain extent, the church that I met my wife at. Because I remember people would come in and they would be nicely dressed. Women would wear their big hats so that you could not even see the pulpit because they were so big. They would come so finely dressed. But I wonder how many of those folks really had a heart for the Lord. So you can be dressed on the exterior and you can proclaim and portray righteousness But again, God knows the inner man and woman. He knows your heart. And so Jesus, as he's speaking to the church at Laodicea, he is speaking to them, talking about that you portray yourself and proclaim yourself as one thing, but you are not. And so instead of having this riches and material wealth, instead of being clothed nicely, you know what? You need to buy from me true wealth. And so when he says, buy from me gold refined by fire, think about refinement. What is the process when you refine gold or silver? You are taking it through a heating process so that the all of the immaterial or the impurities are refined and filtered out so that you have pure gold or pure silver. What he's telling the church is this. I want to take all of the sinfulness and unrighteousness out of you so that you are pure. And so instead of relying upon your riches, you need to buy from me gold that is refined so that you might truly be rich. And see, for us to truly be rich means this, that we have spiritual wealth, not just material wealth. We need to have spiritual wealth, which exceeds all material goods. He then goes on and says this, and may you also buy for me white robes to clothe clothe you and to keep the shame of your nakedness from being seen. 
See, these were people who were unrighteous. They were un, they were sinful individuals. And Jesus is pointing this out. And he says, therefore, you know what? Who cares about your fine linen? What you really need is white robes. And what does white robes speak of? Purity. It speaks of righteousness. The Infinite Flow Show, where hip hop, the gospel, and sports intersect. Be humble, sit down, be humble, sit down, be humble, yeah, lay low, be humble, lay low, yeah, be humble, sit down, be humble. Welcome to the Infinite Flow Sports segment. This week I want to talk about not necessarily a active basketball player, but I want to talk about a basketball player's father. Speaking of LeVar Ball, who is the father of Lonzo, LiAngelo, and LaMelo Ball. Uh, Lonzo Ball just finished his freshman year at UCLA and um, had a pretty good uh, freshman season. He's declared for the NBA draft, and he's going to be a top pick, probably at least in the top two, three players that are going to be drafted. But the individual who's actually making the most noise is his father, LeVar Ball. If you haven't heard, uh, LeVar is very outspoken, uh, thinks very highly of his son Lonzo, and really all of his sons. And he's said some statements or made some statements that are pretty outrageous and outlandish. Um, but one of the things that he said that um, has really got people in a tizzy is, I could kill Michael Jordan one-on-one. Um, I, think, <laughs> I think he would be a, a, a really tall task for him to beat Michael Jordan, even now. <laughs> much less Michael Jordan in his prime. Um, one of the other things he indicated was he thought his son Lonzo Ball was better than Steph Curry. And so, you know, he's and he said some other things as well. One of the things I, I, I want to say is this. I had someone who called me a couple of weeks ago, and he asked me, hey, what do you think about LeVar Ball? And I said, he, he is what he is. He's always spoken like that. I don't know LeVar personally. I have a friend of mine who knows him fairly well. He went to school with him at Cal State LA and knows the family, uh, LeVar's you know, brothers, uh, knows LeVar's wife. Um, uh, LeVar's wife, by the way, I heard she was in, an incredible basketball player at Cal State LA. I heard she was a hooper. And so, um, you know, this, this relationship that I have with this individual who knows LeVar and the family um, he's, you know, told me some things about LeVar. Um, I have, again, I don't have a relationship with LeVar, but I have seen him in the gym. I remember when, uh, LeVar was coaching his sons when they were little, um, Lonzo would have been about 11 and that means, uh, Jello, LiAngelo would have been about 10 and then LaMelo, LaMelo, the youngest ball brother, um, he would have been maybe six, seven years of age, somewhere in there. So I remember when, remember them when they were young. I remember, you know, um, watching them shoot the basketball. I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, they, these kids need to learn how to shoot the ball because uh, they had the funny shot way back when. Um, but LeVar used to come into the gym talking. That's, that's, all, that's all he would do is just talk, talk, talk you know, big, deep voice and just talking, talking, talking. So this LeVar that the world is now getting to see, 
he hasn't he's no different than where he was you know seven eight nine years ago i mean he is what he is now here's the thing and this is where i take um you know some concern in regards to how he has spoken is he speaks and he has this arrogant kind of haughty attitude um he's talking about you know lonzo is worth you know x amount of dollars you know we're not going to sign a shoe deal unless it's a billion dollars and so it seems to be all about money and wealth and status and there's this pride and arrogance i mean lonzo hasn't even stepped into the league yet he hasn't gotten to the nba i i think potentially he could be good because uh, the kid is talented. There's, let's not take anything away from the kid. I mean, he's six six. He's long. He's athletic. Uh, he can shoot it. Um, he, the one thing I like about his game is he is completely unselfish. He will try to get other guys on his team involved before he starts taking shots. Now, when he needs to take shots, he's going to take them. But he tries to get everybody else involved so that he can um, you know establish a format and a tempo for his team to be successful so I'll give him that but he hasn't even stepped foot into the league yet he hasn't gotten uh, gotten onto a, a team he hasn't gotten into training camp he's not on a team and so to say that he's going to be better than staff or any NBA team uh, player at this moment really is, is quite ludicrous I mean, think about how many guys have been stated or it's been stated that they are going to be good. I remember there was a, a guy at USC. His name was Harold Miner. They used to call him Baby Jordan. And I remember when he was at USC, everybody said, oh, he's going to be the next Jordan. I mean, athletic, could, I mean, could play his behind off. Harold Miner got to the league. And I don't know how many years he played, you know, seven, eight years. I, I Don't quote me on that. But he played in the league, but he was average at best. And so it doesn't make a difference what you've done in high school. It doesn't make a difference what you've done in college. The pros are the pros, and they are pros for a reason. They are the best of the best. They are the absolute best in the world. And we have no idea... And quite frankly, LeVar has no idea how good Lonzo or any of his kids are going to be at that level. So he needs to take a pause, you know, from that standpoint. But at, you know, one of the things that I think is really key is LeVar needs to be humble. He needs to take this opportunity to say, man, my son has an opportunity to get in the NBA and let's see what he does with it instead of having these these arrogant diatribes diatribes that he's you know he's going to be better than Steph I'm better than Jordan you know all of these crazy crazy things he needs to be humble I'm reminded of the song um, that Kendrick Lamar just came out with humble he needs to be humble one of the things that the Bible says is this in first Peter 5 5 it says clothe yourself with humility in Proverbs the writer speaks about humility quite a bit in Proverbs 16 verse 18 the writer says this pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before stumbling and then later on in Proverbs 18 verse 12 he says this before destruction the heart of a man is haughty but humility goes before honor and so what is the writer indicating? Those who are arrogant, who are prideful, who have this haughty speech, there is destruction that is coming forth. But those who are humble and those who have humility, honor will follow. And so I would suggest to LeVar, and I don't necessarily think the kids are like this, but I think more of the dad, hey, be humble. Let's see what happens. Maybe your son will be better than Steph. But allow that process to happen instead of, you know, saying all of these things, you know, during your 15 minutes of fame. And I don't know if it's, you know, he's, he, and, well, he's obviously trying to grab the spotlight. 
and he is taking full advantage of his 15 minutes of fame. But I would say this, seek humility and see what happens afterwards. Hey, thank you for uh, joining us in the Infinite Flow Sports segment. Lay low, yeah. Be humble, uh. Sit down, be humble, uh. Sit down, uh. Be humble, yeah. Lay low, uh. Be humble, uh. Lay low, yeah. Be humble, uh. Sit down, be humble, uh. Sit down, yeah. But then he goes on to say this, and you need salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. See, Laodicea was known as a city that was rich. It was known as a city that had fine linen, but they also produced this medicinal ointment that you could put on your eyes and it would help your eyes for those who could not see. They were known for that. And so what Jesus is saying is this, you have this medicinal ointment that you use so that you can help people see but you need an ointment or an anointment from me so that you can truly be spiritually awakened so that you might understand right from wrong, truth from error, so that you might understand righteousness versus unrighteousness. And so Jesus is saying this, you need a total overhaul. You need to, it reminds me of, I forgot the name of that show where they would come in and there would be individuals, they were living in homes and the houses really need to be torn down. And so the show, they would come in and they would have all these contractors and they would come in and they would redo, what was it, total, total extreme makeover. Yes. They would come in and redo the entire house so that you couldn't even recognize that new house versus the old house. This is what Jesus is indicating the church of Laodicea to need, Laodicea, the sea needed. They needed an extreme makeover so that they could get rid of the old and so that they could be renewed so that they would be a new church and new individuals within Christ. But then at verse 19, he says this, and I reprove and discipline those whom I love. Be earnest, therefore, and repent. Now, you might say, why would Jesus take the time to address this church body who apparently does not represent him well? They apparently do not want any part of him. They have rejected the mission that they were supposed to have. Why would Jesus want to see them reproved, see them changed? And I go back to something that I stated last week. Jesus or God says this. He's not willing that any should perish, but that what? That all should come to repentance. See, Jesus purchased individuals with his blood, proving his love. Jesus loves his creation. And therefore, he wants his creation to follow after him. And see, those he loves, he will chasten. He will discipline. It's like a parent with their child. See, you... You created that individual. You created that child. You love them. You care for them. Like my mother-in-law always says, you will swim hell and high water for your children. And so you want to see the very best for them, but you want to see them live right. And so you will chasten and discipline those you love. Jesus loved or loves his church. He loved the church at Laodicea. And he loves his church today. And therefore, he will chasten and discipline you because he wants to see righteousness in your lives. See, the church, if we are truly to be followers of Christ, and if Christ is holy, then what? We are called to be holy. And see, this church was sinful, and therefore, they needed to repent. They needed to have a transformation in their hearts. They needed to have a paradigm shift. They needed to have a change of mind so that they could truly be representatives of Christ. Verse 20, listen, I am standing at the door, and what am I doing? He is knocking. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come to you and eat with you and you with me. 
Here's the thing about Jesus. Jesus is not going to just overhaul and run into your life. He wants to have a relationship with you, but you must do what? Respond. You must open the door. It's just like when somebody comes and knocks at my front door, I have an option or I have options. I can either open the door or I can leave that door shut. The church of Laodicea, they had left the door shut and left Jesus on the outside. And Jesus is saying, listen, I am knocking at the door. And if you open the door, you know what I will do? I will come in and I will have fellowship with you. I will have a relationship with you. Even despite the fact that your your actions are disgusting. Remember what he said to the church. I would I want to spew you out of my mouth. But again, Jesus is willing to come into your life, to change you, to transform you. He wants to have a relationship with you. And so he is telling the church that I'm knocking. And if you open up, I will come in and fellowship with you. That is a true blessing. Think about the fact that God will come to those who are sinful individuals and he will knock on the door of your heart and he, if you let him come in, will sup with you, have communion and fellowship with you. Praise God for that. Verse 21, and to the one who conquers, note, I will give a place with me on my throne, just as I myself conquered and sat down with my father on his throne. And so if the church at Laodicea, if they repented and conquered sin, they would be able to sit in the kingdom with God. It reminds me of something that we see back in Genesis. Remember, remember the story of Cain and Abel. One of the things that God says to Cain is this, that sin is lurking at the door and it wants to do what? Master you. But you can do what? Overcome it. You can conquer it. And see, this is what Jesus is telling the church here. And this is what he's telling all of us, that if we overcome sin, if we conquer it, and if we submit ourselves unto the Lordship of Jesus Christ, there is a great reward that is available to us. And he says this, I will give you a place on my throne. I will allow you to sit with me and my father within the kingdom. And I don't know about you. I want to sit in the kingdom with God for eternity. But I need to do what? I need to be able to overcome sin. I need to conquer sin. I need to turn from unrighteousness. I need to allow Jesus to have full reign and authority in my life, which means that I need to open the door to my life so that he might be able to fellowship with me. And so then Jesus closes and he says, therefore, let anyone who has an ear listen to what the spirit is saying to the churches. The spirit of the living God is speaking. Just as Jesus spoke 2000 years ago to the seven churches in Asia Minor, he is still speaking today. He is speaking. Are you awake and listening to what the word of God has to say? Are you? Get that kill to your soul, feel heaven. So fool, come get your blessing. I told you, come get your blessing. Yeah, yeah, Smith and Wesson. Spit that Smith and Wesson. Give you that kill to your soul, feel heaven. Yeah, so fool, come get your blessing. I'm trying to. Yeah, I told you, come get your blessing, yeah. Yeah, AK second letter with my range though. Yeah, I feel fly as TSA in plain clothes, yeah. It's see bitchy rappers where they cage though, yeah. Sun came out and dried up all they rain, no, I sound cloud high. Streaming the track and you can spot the fire emotion, cause I'm living all I got. Boy, I'm really living more than sentimental, put it in the middle of an instrumental, every jot and tittle. Every jot and tittle. From my brother, pencil riddle with the riddles of the father's vision, boy, I know you heard me go up. Uh, uh. Sorry for all the hold up, yeah. In the lab now with Cobra, yeah. Tempo, tempo, tempo on me, that's my quota. That album coming soon, now the lead, that's no lie. Smith and Wesson, spit that Smith and Wesson. Get that kill to your soul, feel heaven. So fool, come get your blessing. I told you, come get your blessing, yeah, yeah. Smith and Wesson, spit that Smith and Wesson. Give you that kill to your soul.
soul feel heaven. So too, come get your blessings. I told you, come get your blessings, yeah. Uh, putting in work, young T-shirt up the stove, though. I pull up in all black with the rose gold. Don't get what they feel. God is who I'm admiring. He got me up at that fire, man. That's why I only desire him. Now I'm a worker for hire. He's got a higher plan. Yeah. And Jesus does the hiring. Yeah. And there's nobody higher than. He's the lion. There's no other empire fair. Yeah. That's why I call him your highness, man. Yeah. I don't meditate on your majesty. And how you're managing everything in this galaxy. I try to gather together, but I don't have it together. I'm underwear like the camera's not a reality. Really, I'm just silly as anybody. A sinner that's in the body, that's sinning my sin is great. So I sin for grace. There's nothing more to insinuate. I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. Give me the spirit's food on my dinner plate. I'll eat it up in this beat. I'll just beat it up. I'm giving my heart beat to the beat. I just need a drum. My heart is weak and it's weak and it's really sicker than syphilis. Silly, you mean it? Think I can live with this? See, I'm sick of this. I need a Savior, my sin, I can see you later You sent your son for me and in him I can see your favor The sinner, the sweetest savior I see him, I mean his nature I need him to me, he's nature He's king and no being straighter, I'm good God is who I'm admiring He got me up at that fire, man That's why I only desire him Now I'm a worker for hire He's got a higher plan, yeah And Jesus does the hiring, yeah And there's nobody higher than He's the lion, there's no other empire fair Yo, that's why I call him your highness Oh snap, we done did it, we showed the body raps Eating dope beats like roast beef, that's a body bag With Davis Absolute, bringing truth, that's absolute Don't believe in truth, that's absolute, is that statement absolute? No. If they don't know, now they know Some pastors claim if you saw, then you'll be reached with the door The church is more like a show, their attendance will grow I think it's the body's raw, to call out these false prophets like J. Cole It's either edify or it's bloody by, I won't let it slide if you let me die Cause we the bride, yep, he's a lion, we, we the bride, don't get my vibe Boom, bada, boom, bap, you can risk with the blood in the church clap Can't lose your salvation So you weren't saved If you left like a democrat Like Paul I just wanna see the Lord is risen Like Silas I just wanna sing hymns in prison Just be about his business Consistence with persistence While the spirit gives the body gifts Like Christmas better than mama's biscuits Don't just go to church Be the church It's not what when where It's who Long story short It's you And if they say I don't go to church Cause it's full of hypocrites galore Well just let them know We got room for one more Cause when your captain's perfect It's logic Your blemishes will show so I look at the life of Christ like I got a long way to go A peck of pickled peppers, Peter Piper picked Now Peter helps start the body, then his body was on the crucifix We make up the body, yeah You see my people right beside me with an of the godly We make up the body, yeah Far from perfect, undeserving from the earth and the dirt But you know we make up the body, yeah You see my people right beside me with an of the godly We make up the body, yeah we make up the body, put yeah, your hands in the So, who's this young and rapid dude who's got a lot of attitude Singing about her altitudes, got giving in me zappitudes In the lose, barbecue the flow of my pre blues Trying to put more energy, I'm changing up the magnitude Uh, why, why people don't give me the time of day My mind a dictionary and I got some words to say I say what I pray to get me through the day To realign the thinking of my young brain My train of thought can go off the rails But the conductor rings a bell and the locomotive sails rare to had a little engine that really could He scared me up the twist and turns Underwood few times I felt so misunderstood Cause I'm not from the hood But my rap is pretty good And it's all for a god And I'm doing what I should So I'ma go Johnny in And trying to be good uh. Let me give you a peace of mind So I can get a peace of mind Let me give you a peace of mind So I can get a peace of mind Let me give you a peace of mind, so a peace of mind. So I can get a peace of mind Let me give you a peace of mind So I can get a peace of mind uh, I've been working for years with my 
my craft And I can't even tell you that it's worth it when I do the math, see I've been mentoring some brothers who done passed me And I've been rolling around with savages who classy And if you ask me, time ain't never on my side Cause all my hours are get the laugh, laugh, see See, I'm half past the time, I laugh half your rhymes are still not faster than Degrassi Uh, sometimes I feel paralyzed Too focused on the things I know that will terrify uh, And if I put all my fears with my cares and I ring it out They probably would turn into tears And that's just what comes from a pair of eyes Seeing is believing, I see paradise And even if we ain't seeing out of eye I can't lie, if I see you hurting, I'll be by your side Give me that night, night, no not that evil Ooh, But that night when I'm chilling with my people oh, yeah. Cool breeze, dim lights, this is peaceful Good night, next week, that's the sequel hey, Give me the night, you already know that will be the light hey. Oh that's right, that's uh, right. and I'm just chilling with my hate thieves right, Turn it up, got this slapping on me yeah. yeah, I'm feeling good right now, right now. Team with me feeling good right now, yeah Been laughing all day Writing verses, making hits all day, yeah Slide the country club, had a good time with my heaties, everybody turned up. RPSMG, the team, and we ain't stopping for nobody, now I'm in. Thank you for listening to this episode of our podcast. We will have new episodes every two weeks, so come back and join us for the Infinite Flow Show, where hip-hop, the gospel, and sports intersect.